The SAP Profitability and Performance Management Solution provides you with predefined sample content for cross-industry profitability and cost management. And this includes a set of process activities that will help you calculate the enterprise profitability based on actual and planning data. This is the application start screen, which offers a user role-based access to all relevant applications. To work on the process activities that are currently assigned to us and our team, we use the My Activities application. You'll notice that the processes are deployed in another application called Processes. This is also where the processes will be assigned to users and teams. Choose the My Activities tab. The current processes shown here in the left tree are available only when the user has appropriate authorizations. Choose PCM process to see the relevant activities for the periodic profitability and cost management process. By default, only the current processes that need attention are displayed. The show list can also display completed processes. A progress indicator shows how many activities of the process are already finished. For profitability and cost management, we see a progress of 0 out of 11 since all the activities are still open. In contrast for this process, we see the progress of 5 out of 11. On the right side, the relevant activities for us and our team are displayed. This can be manual activities like the review of general ledger data and the update of plan and forecast data, or it can be run activities like the execution of the calculation model. Dependent activities might occur. For instance, some planned data might need to be maintained before a calculation model is allowed to run. Four eyes workflows might be assigned to activities so that they need to be approved by another team before the activity can be completed. In the Parameters tab, available parameters of the process are listed. In our case, it's just the assumption about the salary growth rate. In the Selection tab, the scope of the process is shown. In our case, the version and time frame of data, which we work on. Let's start to work on our activities with a review of the general ledger data. We can switch from chart to data grid and also drill down using further characteristics. The general ledger data looks good so we can close the screen. Click on the Complete button, which will switch this activity to completed. Our next activity is to update the plan and forecast data. We can do this in the web UI by clicking the Launch button. If the SAP analysis for Office plugin is installed, we can use Microsoft Excel as a front end to work on live data from the system as well. This is what we're going to demonstrate here. Please note that Excel is just a canvas showing live system data. So when we change, for instance, the commissions and fees to 200,000 and then click the Save Data button, the change will be stored in the system centrally. Now, we have updated the plan and forecast data and we can go back to the My Activities screen. We click Complete to switch the status of this activity. In the same way, we can also work on the next activities as well. The fail activity survey data is designed to be editable by multiple users in parallel. When we launch it, it will ask the user to fill in the version and the survey first before editing is possible so that multiple users can work in parallel on different subsets of the same data. Let's continue with our activities until we reach the calculation activity. We click Complete to switch the status of this activity. We have checked and updated all necessary information so that we can run the execute calculation activity, which will provide us the detailed results of 
the enterprise profitability. This will usually take us a few seconds. During the run, business events can occur that signal exceptional situations arising during the run, and this happens here. The message indicates a problem in one of the allocations and gives us already a first hint about the quantity of records and the overall volume of amounts and drivers affected. In the context of allocations, this is usually called unassigned items, where one or more sender records could not be successfully allocated to a receiver. Before we deal with this business event and resolve it, we want to take a look at the execution flow diagram to get an overview about the just executed part of the calculation model. The execution flow diagram shows an overview of all functions executed by this activity, their type and further details like number of processed records and the individual and overall runtime. In our case, it starts with a union of actual GL data and plan data, then continues with the first allocation to resources and a second allocation further down to activities level. For the allocation to products and services, Another calculation stream comes in, where first activities from a source system are united with manually entered activities from a survey, then additional activity drivers are calculated, and after that, the allocation can take place. Finally, the last allocation brings down the P&L from the products and services level to the channel and customer level. This is where the business event occurred indicated by the red error sign. To understand the applied rules in this function better, we can deep dive by going to the rule flow diagram. Some data is allocated directly to the customer level, and some other data is allocated first to distribution channels, and then further down to the customer level. Let's examine the results further by choosing Analyze. This leads us to the analytic report. All dimensions are available here to drill down further into the results and examine it from every angle. But we still have to deal with our business event, so let's go back to my activities and resolve it via the go to drop down menu. We can get directly to the business event and error management application. It provides one central place to access and deal with all kinds of business events. Also, this application is role-based so that we can only see the current events that are relevant to us in our team. The tree on the left shows the part of the calculation model where the business events occur. Once we choose the scope on the left, the details of the corresponding business events appear on the right side including information like state, message text, affected quantity, volume, and optional comments from other users. Unhandled business events are in the state event and can be resolved in three ways. Ignore. If the event is not material nor otherwise important, the event can be switched to ignore. No partial restart of an activity is necessary in this case and the ignored data will not be part of the result. Transmit. It means that the underlying data will be transmitted to the function result directly without further treatment. Adjustment. This let us define a one-time rule to adapt the underlying data for this event and rerun the necessary parts and packages of the calculation model again. Technically, the business event handling does not change the data source. Instead, it does an adjustment on top of the original data. So, it is safe to try out several adjustments until the business event is resolved, either in simulation mode or as a partial rerun. Instead of applying a one-time rule, we can also click the Create Rule button to define a permanent rule instead, which will handle the situation automatically whenever the business event might occur again. We will then just see a message in the application log. Our next activity is to review the results. So we click the launch button to look at the results. We drill down to the products and service level to check the results in more detail.
The results look fine, so we can go back to the My Activity screen. For this activity, there is a 4 eyes workflow attached, so we can submit the activity, but the reviewer team has to approve it. We do the same with the other activities that need approval. The last activity shows a value flow diagram. It helps us visualize the value flow of all our costs and revenues in providing end-to-end -end transparency about the process data. It allows zooming, filtering, and drill down, and we show its features in more detail in our dynamic reporting and what-if simulation video. For now, we are fine and go back to our activities, where we switch the status to complete as well. With that, we have finished our work on the process activities. Thank you for watching.